Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We are super excited for this live session. Um, I'm Addie, and I'm here with Abby of Uproot Brushes. And today we're going to be using the pencil, paint, and paper brush pack uh, to do some character drawing. Yeah. I'm pretty excited uh, to see Addie draw a really beautiful little cat. I've seen some <laughs> lovely drawings you've done of your own kitties and other kitties, and they are gorgeous. <laughs> I'm um I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie. Uh, the live drawing part, it's it's just kind of like I don't know how it's gonna turn out. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, but I feel like it'll be good to show you if it does turn out really ugly, just like that happens sometimes too. <laughs> no, it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> uh, but Abby has this awesome mark making um, warm up exercise that we kind of wanted to jump into to kind of get familiarized with all the brushes. Um, before we get started, be sure to download the freebies. They're pinned, the link is pinned at the top of the chat. Um, and then the, uh, the brush pack as well. You can purchase that following the link in the chat as well. Cool. So let's jump in. Um, this is, I'm just going to do it on a square format today. So I start with the white background. And then if you have the paint, uh, the pencil, paint and paper um, brush pack, there are two really nice uh, paper overlays, papers that you can use to set up your canvas. Um, if you download the freebie, there's also an overlay brush in that that you can use instead. So to set up your canvas, um, I've already done it here, but I'll do it again just to show you. On the very top layer, you go ahead and you make sure that your primary color is black and your secondary color is white. So primary is on the hang on, left. Sorry, my left and right is atrocious. Left, the white is on the right. And the way that you make sure that you're, you are um, drawing with your primary color is that the dot is the same color as the color on the left. So you go ahead and make it black and the secondary color white you grab one of the overlay brushes. I'm just going to use craft paper overlay, yeah? And you just swoosh across the whole canvas like that. And it just looks a bit gray and garbage now. But when you set that layer blend mode to overlay by pressing the little N on the layer and then scrolling to overlay, it seems to disappear. But the effect that it has on the images below is profound. So I'm just going to um, show you what I prepared earlier. This lot here, if you turn the overlay off, you can I see. I love these. See, it's quite, it's quite textured. And it's sort of a craft paper texture that I photographed and turned into a brush for you. <clears throat> One of so, the things that... If I if I can just plug the yeah. the overlay brushes, I think that Abby is just like a texture wizard, and that's something that's always stood out to me, like in all of your brush packs. But the any of the overlay brushes are really above and beyond. I just think it's magnificent to get that rich depth of texture with one layer. Yeah. I like so them because really you don't like. actually have to change the image below. You can just put them on top and you can easily swap them in and out without completely wrecking what you've drawn. Um, For okay, sure. so get started with the exercise. I'm just going to grab versatile watercolor, the brush. And we're just going to make a couple of splodges. Oops, I'm just make it a bit bigger. Make little eggs. They don't have to be perfect because all we're doing is just creating little um, areas of color that we're going to create some interest over the top of. And so with these, do you like to keep them in a uh, color grouping of sorts? Are you working from a favorite palette, trying to keep things in the same color family? I have this palette that I use a lot and I used in last time's live, this one. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not even going to say it. Um, if you like, I'll share it, and um, you can download it from the um, from the description of the stream later. Um, I haven't oh, done that. I think. Yeah, everybody would it's, love that. It's just a mix of sort of dirty, bright colors that I just seem to use a lot. Um, last one. Let's pick a color. Cool. And then I'm just going to go in and do some fun textures and um, marks over the top on a different layer. Let's make a new layer using the pencil crayons. Now, there's two different kinds of pencil crayons. There's the ordinary pencil crayon, and then you'll see the, oh, there's soft, and then there's ordinary. And then in each of those two, there is normal, straight, and then there's layering. And the layering one allows you to get that vibe of an illustration where the layers of um, pencil crayon have created darker bits in between. Also, I'll show you what, what I mean. I'm just going to grab layering pencil crown and then I'll grab this just to keep using this purple. So you can see it's quite a nice textural pencil to start with. And then if I color over the top and some of those strokes overlap, they're going to get a bit darker where they overlap. But that's not really going to happen if you use the one that isn't the layering pencil crown. So let's go for the one that isn't layering, and you'll see the difference that I'm talking about. We use this light blue. Can you see that it obliterates the color beneath it? Yeah, totally. But then if we use the layering one, you actually get, hang on, let me just go, I'll go over the purple down here. You can actually see the purple below. Oh, that looks so cool. So you can use them in different ways and for different applications. But it gives you that sort of um, hand-drawn, more textured vibe with the pencil crayons. Yeah, now, it seems more realistic because it, it wouldn't yeah. completely cover up in real life. Yeah. And when, when I do a sort of loosening up mark making exercises, I like to do lots of um, scratchy lines and things where you aren't desperately trying to create the perfect thing. So I'm just going to go wild and pick random colors and just make some patterns here. Now, do you do like... Do you try to get into a mode of drawing from um, like your ball joints or your shoulders? Or is that something that just comes naturally to you? And if that's a really weird question, I can explain yeah. further. <laughs> if I'm being more expressive, then I'll draw from my elbow. Like, okay. like that. But sometimes yeah. you want to kind of um, use fine motor skills to be a little bit more precise. And the um, streamline tool in any of the brushes, you can actually turn it on and off in these brushes, even though they're um, they're not set to streamline. So if you desperately want something super smooth, you open the brush and on the first tab, you just whack the streamline to maximum or whatever point of streamline you prefer. But <clears throat> when I'm when I'm sketching, I prefer to have no streamline because. You kind of can't get that realistic, I'm drawing on paper and this, you know, I'm, I'm not being interfered with by a computer vibe. Yeah, I think the, the shakiness is some of the charm. I, don't, yeah, I shouldn't yeah. say shakiness, but the um, more organic look. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So then I'm just going to hit a bit of... Um, shading over the top of these bits here for no apparent reason just to loosen up my hand and get sketching i love that it looks like gold filigree do you do warm-up mm -hmm. exercises every time that you sit down to draw Inadvertently, accidentally. I don't know if you do this too, but you open up a, 
a replay of a time lapse and you discover that the first five seconds is just random garbage. That's, yes. that's me. I think that we actually do it without even realizing it, that to prepare for a sketch, we end up just drawing random garbage, which is, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, which is absolutely okay. I mean, if I was going to be drawing in a sketchbook, my, this first step that I ever do if I'm doing real sketching on, on paper is I make a mess somewhere on the page to break that um, white page trauma. I don't know if you yeah. know that feeling. It is, it is like so um, overwhelming to have the blank page just staring at you. Yeah. And I, I totally agree. I feel like working with a texture helps too. It's like I'm yeah. starting by doing one thing, even if it's something like the overlay yeah. texture. Exactly. Exactly. It's almost like my husband says that the first dent on a car is always the worst. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. I, um, I don't want to be I, the person who makes that dent. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I was the person that made that dent on my husband's car. <laughs> and, uh, it was a it was a series of of dents and um, <laughs> actually an unfortunate <laughs> story <laughs> it's okay we did we didn't have to get it like fixed it's just like some of the pieces are like plastic on the undercarriage um oh, yes. kind of, like, down below and so they're they're now zip tied <laughs> <laughs> um so it doesn't look great but uh outside yeah, time actually on. I hit a bear. It was really sad. You hit a bear. Yeah. So it's actually miraculous that the car was okay. I think the bear was probably okay too. Um, I tried to go and check. I got out of the car, and my husband was like, "What are you gonna do if you find it? Why are you looking for it?" Yeah. <laughs> but um, I mean, I think I was kind of in shock. But it, like, we were totally okay. The car just was like, I think it was just like a little bit on on like the like the bear was running and moving uh, i'm sorry i just like have to keep reminding we hit a bear yeah <laughs> that's probably like the most uniquely um american thing i've ever heard yeah <laughs> bear too. well i grew up i grew up in in the woods in minnesota um just like in the middle of nowhere and so there's there is a lot of wildlife up there that is awesome <laughs> yeah <sighs> okay i'm just going um i'm just going ape here do your own thing just make some marks and have fun with it because it's actually not for any reason other than loosening up figuring out what you like to see in an image. Some I feel like <clears> this, <throat> is, um, this is just like a good creative exercise too. Uh, yeah. By doing abstract um, things, you can, yeah. Yeah, and I, wheel you can, if you want to, turn them into creatures like. <laughs> it's already cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. But the point is just to make some little marks and shapes and um, just loosen up your hand and your mind and your eye and just get into it. Shall I share? Um, yeah, so let's see. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I, still learning. How do I figure out? Okay, make it bigger. There we go. Yeah, that so oh, we've been a little overexposed. I'll fix that. But um, I did little, little plant tree things. Cool. And it's the lack of being precious about it that kind of gives it the actually pretty cool vibe. I mean, I would yeah. actually like that if I saw it on Instagram.
There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. And these kind of things you can you can use to loosen up, and then you can also maybe do some lettering over the top or near. And because they're so abstract, it doesn't have to be um, representative of anything. So it goes nicely with kind of a bit of word words or um, yeah. Yeah, cool. I think that this is also a cool way to get to know the brushes too. So if you have a pack that you haven't explored much um, without putting too much pressure on yourself, you can yeah. play with it this way. Oh, let me just show you the difference between the soft pencil crayon and the um, ordinary pencil crayon. The soft pencil crayon is, as the name implies, soft. So it's got more of a Conte kind of vibe to it. And you don't have to press as hard to get a fully opaque um, texture. And this is the other pencil crown, which is far more like a, if you are at school and your teacher hands up pencil crowns. So it's more for, more for detail. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Cool. Very cool. All right. Um, should we hop into the next bit? Yes. Okay. So when Abby and I were talking about what we were, how we were going to do this live stream and what we were going to show, um, we were showing each other time lapses of our characters that we'd drawn and it was um, really enlightening for me, especially uh, to see, I'm a little self-conscious sometimes about my character drawing skills. And so to see the process and that everybody is, um, you know, changing their mind, making different decisions, erasing, tweaking, twisting, the time lapses really show that um, in a way that the finished piece that you post on Instagram yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Um, and then something that we've also talked about is using photo references. And um, I feel like in those Facebook groups, you always see people questioning it or like wondering if it's okay if they do. Yeah. Um, and I think I speak for both of us when I, I like I say that we're of the mindset that it's absolutely okay, totally okay. Yeah. Um, because it's how you learn. Yeah. <laughs> and a um, lot of people have the vibe that tracing is an absolute no-no. But sometimes yeah. if you really want to get the expression of a character or the way that it's twisted or the way that it's sitting, sometimes tracing it and then manipulating some parts of it and it of your drawing and changing it up just a little bit so that it's not exactly how you traced it can give you a really lovely character. And there's absolutely no shame in tracing a part of a drawing if you'd like to. I, I just think there's too much snobbery <laughs> around how you get to the final image. Absolutely agree. I think it's um, the same thing as like when you are in those like very beginner books that show you like the circles and the squares that come together. And if you were yeah. if you were drawing over that, it's the same thing. It's a way of learning the proportions. So um, I agree, too much snobbery. <laughs> Everybody has to learn somehow. Exactly. Okay, so I wanted to walk through um, one that I did trace from and how you can make it your own and use that as inspiration. So what I did here is I traced really just like the basic shapes of it. And I also did a couple lines for the placement of the face. Um, and now it seems to have... So, oh, it won't let you pause. Mine does that sometimes yeah. too. Quite annoying. It was, it was frozen. I might have to, I might have to close my Procreate quick because it isn't, um, it isn't letting me navigate through it either. Uh -oh. 
Let's do a hard close. Hmm. All right. Well, let me run through. It's fine. I think we can. We'll do another one. I made oh a copy of it, so I might. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I just drew over the basic shapes of it and some of the features. Um, and this time lapse is not going to work for me. This is this is doomed. So let me just <laughs> pop in and do it this way. So that was like you saw the initial sketch, and then yeah. I tweaked. Um, I made the the eyes bigger and the head bigger, which are just like the basic cheats to characterify something. But you can still see it has the. Um, like the original uh, proportions, basically. Yeah. That I that I traced. The, the posture is the same. I think sometimes the posture is the part that um, is tricky because the the body of an animal moves differently to how a human moves, and you you want to replicate that closely. Yeah, especially when it's in a pose um, that you're maybe not as familiar with. So this was a picture that I had taken of, of my cat Pronto, um, and I didn't I, I didn't leave the photo in in the background here. I think I added it as a private reference, yeah. um, which is a new five X feature. But you can see I just like made the eyes really big. Um, and then went what through. What I think is important to notice is how many times you drew his face before you were happy. Because yeah, I think the because perception is that um, an expert drawer will do it once and it'll be fabulous. But that's complete garbage. <laughs> yeah. Some of it is that you don't maybe know do how you want it to look. Yeah. Um, or. <laughs> I think something that, that I know I struggle with sometimes is having an idea of what I want it to look like and not necessarily knowing how to execute that. Um, yeah. And you have, to, you have to try and try over and yeah. over again. And finesse it into position. You were saying that you use um, the liquify tool to move things around. Yeah, I think, um, all right, I still can't navigate here, but, um, I love using Liquify, um, I'll pop in here quick, to move things around, but also as a, a quick way to expand and contract things. Um, make sure I'm on the sketch layer. And so, especially to make eyes bigger, I love using the expand and you can adjust the, the pressure, um, and essentially like the strength of it, but you can really quickly make fine tune yeah. adjustments like that. Yeah, and, and it keeps all the marks that you made previously and the lines are still there and you don't lose them by rubbing them out and redrawing them. Yeah, and I think you can actually select multiple layers or a group to use Liquify yeah. on. Yes, you can, I do that a lot, I love that. Um, and then <laughs> I'll show you this one too quick because this one I used um, just a reference photo and then drew what I saw. Oh boy, I didn't save my spot here. You can see all of the photos. I don't think you have enough pictures of your cats, Addie. <laughs> Um, Apple has this, the, my phone has this feature where I can like find all of the photos of all cats and oh, it puts them into one album. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There it is. All right. 
So that's the oh. that's the reference. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then you can see how I start here with just this like weird egg shape to try to imitate what her body looks like. Um, and then I kind of start to draw in the limbs and the head. I'm not focusing on the details. Um, from there, you can adjust composition. And so, <laughs> or add a tail, pokey doesn't have a tail. <laughs> um, and here too, you will see the amount of times that I redraw the face because I just didn't know how I wanted it to look. Um, I think it's kind of important to like be, uh, not be hard on yourself, like yeah. be gentle with yourself when you're drawing because yeah. it's totally okay to change your mind or not necessarily be able to execute it the first time. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, that's a that's a quick exercise. And, and so then um, we can jump into sketching if yeah. if we're all good to go. Definitely um, drop a comment in the chat if you're following along live. I have so this the is cat. your cat, is it? No, no, this is a photo that I found on um, <laughs> a photo that I found on Pexels, um, which is a great resource for images here. Let me get him all positioned. Okay, so I definitely only have two cats. I don't have a hairless cat, but I love drawing them because you can really it's, they're not obscured by fluff, so you can kind of learn anatomy um, of a cat by drawing a hairless cat. <laughs> so, um, let me, I have to, and this is my first time doing a top down, and so I kind of have to reposition myself so that I, I know you can still see me in the view, but I can draw comfortably, so I'm not all stiff. Okay, so here, um, what I'll probably start with is the head. I'm using the 6B pencil, um, which is just like a really soft pencil. Uh, uh, just like, oh, nope, that's a soft layering pencil. I like to sketch with the 6B pencil. Um, I feel like it has just the right amount of crumble to it, if that makes sense. And then um, I always start with like basic shapes that I can snap into place using the quick shape feature in Procreate. He has such um, a fun body. He's shaped like a, like a toilet roll with a cone on top. <laughs> I love also when Sphinx cats are like a little chubby. Because <laughs> you just <laughs> see it all. <laughs> I just think it's amazing. Um, cats have like kind of triangular heads almost yeah, um, yeah and so when i draw the head i then like to add my contour lines for the face and when drawing these you want to think about it in 3d so mine are uh curved to help show that and then i'm going to rotate this into position a little less and i should have mentioned i have my canvas already set up with an overlay brush just like abby showed for the warm-up exercise so when we paint later that texture will show through and it kind of looks like he kind of looks like et right now <laughs> Yeah, his ears are huge compared to his head. Does anybody in the chat actually have one of these kitties? I would like to know that. I hope somebody does. I had a friend this in skin college. Feel like sausage skin because it looks like sausage skin to me. So I can answer that one. I had a friend in college that had one of these cats, and it felt like velvet because. They're oh. actually covered in like really fine, like like peach fuzz. Really? 
It's so good. It's phenomenal. They look like they'd be sticky and sweaty. <laughs> I wonder if they do sweat. Because dogs, <laughs> you have dogs, right? Dogs don't sweat, do they? No, they pant, allegedly. Although my mm. mother-in-law had a Jack Russell that used to sweat and be sticky and gross and it stank. And he was a lovely good boy, but he was very stinky. Oh. Okay, I see Lori is asking, how did they set up the canvas again with the overlay? Um, I can show you quick. So you'll want a new layer at the very top of all of your layer stack. And then in your color panel, um, click out of the palettes into the value section on the lower uh, left. And then you'll wanna make sure that you set your secondary color, which is the one on the right to white and your primary color, which is the one on the left to black. Um, and then this brush set has two, it has craft paper overlay and favorite paper overlay and favorite paper overlay is the one I love to use the most. Um, and the then name, you just, I, mean, I use it all the time as well. <laughs> It's so versatile. I use it for everything. Um, and then here, I'll do it again quick. You'll set your opacity and brush size at 100% for both of those things. And then just use one single brush stroke to fill the entire canvas. And then from there, you can tap in the layers panel, tap the N. And if you scroll down, you'll see overlay as an option. And that will allow that blend mode allows everything to pass through underneath. And so when we paint below, you'll see the texture. Okay, back to so much. This cat is so ugly. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I've done is I've just drawn in my like basic circles for the um, hip and the shoulder, which I feel like is when you see all of those how to draw um, books and infographics and stuff, it's always like these circles and then they jump like three steps ahead. Um, and it's like a beautiful finished piece, but it really is how I start my drawings if I'm, if I'm looking at a reference like this. Mine is throwing so much shade. It just looks like it has had enough. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you want, can I share? Can I add it? Yeah, if you want to. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's so much sass here. That is amazing. He just looks so salty. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I'm imagining he must be because he must be cold. Poor guy. I did think about adding a sweater to this one. We'll see how we do on time. Do you do that thing? Um, well, I do this. When I'm drawing somebody's expression, I do the face that I'm drawing. And like my husband will turn around at his desk because he works right behind me. And he'll be like, why are you pulling that face? And I'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> I am now going to imagine when you like, I'm definitely going to look back through some yeah. of the characters that you've drawn. <laughs> I do, I also do that. I also do that when I read about expressions that people make if I'm yeah. reading a novel. Yeah, the same. I can't help it. <laughs> empaths, I think. Yeah. That's so there's cool. something about like, Sorry, I was oh. just interrupting you. The circle and the, the way that you've structured him has helped you position the shoulder and the arm really well. The alternative, doing it without that, I struggle with so much. I think some of it is just the, like, the experience and practice. Um, having it as a guide there, it's wild to me how well it works out every time. It does, it works out beautifully. So as I'm going also, I'm making minor adjustments from 
the image because I'm not going for hyper hyper realism. So yeah. um, I'm making his his little limbs skinnier on the bottom. That makes and a then, cute test. I don't know why yeah. it does. I think they just like they look kind of dumb. <laughs> <laughs> And then when I sketch, I am so messy about it. But that's totally fine. I think that those, um, I remember at uni, the, um, the drawing instructor used to call those searching lines. So, and he used to encourage people to leave the searching lines there so that they give the person who's looking at the drawing a bit of an understanding of how you got to the point where you got to that is such sounds like a very nice professor he was actually torturous and every time he drew something he would say what else can you do about that and then you'd have to go away and redraw it he, we also had this terrible exercise where he um we had a huge checkered floor in this victorian building that the um, art school was in and he would throw pieces of paper on the floor and then as a perspective exercise, we had to draw the room with the checkered floor and try and make the pieces of paper look like they were lying flat on the floor. And that sounds easy, but it was close to impossible. I think it was the one, the one exercise that the most people cried about. Oh, <laughs> that, that sounds kind of miserable. Like not even yeah. a fun <laughs> thing to draw. No, we also, had nude models and there was one creepy one who used to um during the breaks walk around and he would um sticky tape condoms to people's drawings if he could see that his junk was in their drawing it was pretty bad yeah oh that's bizarre mm -hmm. maybe i shouldn't have said i am um... i'm sorry <laughs> i um i think it's so interesting how differently uh, the sketchy lines were treated for you. I know yeah. for me, I I went to fashion school, um, and so it wasn't it wasn't as artsy. It was a mix of marketing and art, and um, I just can hear my professor's voices saying like, "Get rid of those kitchen, chicken scratches. You don't want the chicken scratch lines. It looks like you don't know what you're doing." <laughs> Oh, that's weird. I don't know. I love yeah. those fashion drawings where you can see that somebody's just left the couple of lines there because they wanted to indicate the fabric was doing something wild. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, maybe it's that like learning to do it a certain rigid way before yeah. creating your own style. But yeah. I think I think scratchy lines are good. Yeah, me too. So let's see, I'd like to pull out and look at the like overall composition of him and kind of like this is a good place to figure out where I might want to adjust and, and improve the, the characterify, characterification yeah. of it. And I think I'm gonna make him a little chubbier. This is actually really, um good to show how you're stylizing the shape of him and his um posture etc <clears throat> to give him a more caricature kind of vibe and less of a just a drawing a cat yeah i've never been super interested in just copying a photo to make it look like it's super realistic um yeah I mean, I have massive admiration for people who can do that. Oh, for sure. For sure. I yeah. think it's like so far out of my skill range. Like I know I'm not going to get there, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I, have to, I have to regroup here for a second. Um, 
All right. So I'm going to start drawing in the features here. And um, I always like to, as an exercise, like try to figure out what is protruding. And on a cat, that's for sure the snout. And so some of the first things that I draw are the like muzzle portion and any um, anything that would be like obscuring other parts of its face, if that makes sense. Yes. So the way that this cat's head is turned, you can see mm -hmm. in the reference, um, it's tilted somewhat or facing somewhat out towards the other side. And so when I make the cat's eyes super big, it's probably going to be partially obscured. One of the eyes is going to be partially obscured by the snout here. And so I kind of like to figure some of those things out um, earlier on because that's like a, um, like a more fundamental structural thing that I'm putting on the paper versus the stylized things that we'll do later on. Something that I do that's sort of a cheat, if there's um, a, something that would normally be front on that's now angled, is I draw it front on and then I use the transform tool to warp it so that it's at an angle, which is um, very helpful. It is so brilliant. So I feel like I've almost inadvertently done a more front on look here. So I can try, unless, do you have something that you could no, show on yours? Well, okay. No. All right. So I like to make the selection, since I'm drawing all on one layer, of what I want to warp specifically. And so I just use the freehand selection tool to draw around it and then tap the transformation arrow here. And over under warp, um, you can use just the regular warp or you can click in advanced mesh here and it gives you some additional controls and some nodes. But here you can just kind of like grab in the middle and pull it out here and it, it creates this 3D mesh version. So you can see I'm pulling it all over and still <laughs> tap to undo. Um, but this is such a cool, um, this is just like one of the huge advantages of working in digital. You can see yeah. here, even if you tap on the nodes, you can move the layer order of each of those. Yeah. It's really nice to be able to see in real time the changes that you're making and then not have to commit them. Um, see, well, another thing that I... Awesome. Sorry, <laughs> speaking over each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really easy to just do that. It's yeah. and it's not even a cheat. I feel like you're still using your eyes. Yeah. Absolutely. And training your eye. He's a much happier kitty in your drawing than he is in the photograph. <laughs> and so with these brushes, I really like to use my original sketch as my final line work as well. So as I go, I will start to erase and clean things up um, in preparation for planning to use that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm lazy too. Um, some people will draw a sketch and then they'll do a second sketch on top of it as like the finalized lines. That's up to you. That's a few would like to do that. I like to just erase the bits I don't really want and then I just mess with it and um, clean it up and use that exact sketch. Same. Oh, it's, it suddenly all just comes together. 
This is, I think, one of my more favorite parts of, of drawing characters is when you start to, once you had the features. Yeah. Oh, remember the other day you mentioned to me that thing about looking straight on at an eye as a circle and then if the eye is looking somewhere else it becomes an oval oh yeah yeah that was um, really sorry what what did you say i said that was really helpful information can you tell us about that yes absolutely <laughs> so um it's from it's, i can't take original credit for it um because it's from a wonderful series of books called How to Think When You Draw. Um, but what it talks about is thinking about when you're drawing eyeballs and eye directions as a sphere. Um, and so if I start with a circle, I'm gonna start to add some contour lines mm -hmm. so that you can sort of You know, we're gonna we're gonna make that with mesh. Okay. Um, but if you think of it as a sphere, and because it is in in your socket, um, and then you draw the iris or the pupil in the middle, um, as it changes direction, then um, if you think about it rotating versus, and I'm sorry, I keep motioning in front of my own eye. <laughs> That's maybe gross. Um, but if you think about it rotating downward and as a circle that's just like becoming, um, more ovular, maybe I'm doing a poor job of explaining this. Let me just demonstrate what that will look like, not with warp, but if I just draw a new circle. Um, if the eye is like rotating this way, this circle here turns more ovular this way. Yeah. And so then if I can try oh, to shift yeah. it that That's way. Good, um, illustration of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so this can be a good mental exercise that you can do if you're trying to figure out the eye positioning and, yeah. and the direction. I suppose the top one kind of looks like the hole on an olive. I suppose if you look at the olive <laughs> straight on, the hole is round. And if you tilt the olive sideways, the hole is oval. I really top. like that analogy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other thing that that book talks about with eye direction is um, how you can kind of lose that a bit when you're drawing these oversized irises and pupils. Um, yeah. And so that's when you might want to make up for it with eyebrow expression or eyelid expression. Yes. Um, if it's super because, stylized. Yeah, and I, I think like, if you're really trying to make something super cute, you want the big, big eyes. Um, yeah. But if you're, if you're also wanting an animated expression, that's a good way to then achieve it again. Okay, oh my gosh. All right, so here's what I have real quick here. Um, and I just looked at the clock and so I'm going to jump ahead a couple steps because I've prepared this in advance and I wanted to be able to cover everything. Um, from here, I would do more stylizing, probably adjust the eyes a few more times. Um, and 
then clean up my line work a bit and the result would be something like this. And so this process always takes the longest, this sketching portion. Yeah. Yeah, and then the coloring portion is, um, it's, it's like maybe the most impactful, but it goes so quick. Ooh. And so what I do is I place my outline layer on top and then I just have five layers below. I'm probably not going to use all of them for this. Um, and I'm going to choose a soft pink for his skin. And I've been really enjoying using these cross-hatching brushes to quickly fill in with a ton of texture. So I suppose it makes more sense when I'm drawing furry animals because you can kind of go outside the lines and get um, you know some spiky fur on them. That fleshy pink of the cat is so <laughs> funny. We'll we'll make it um we'll make it cute. We'll make sure it's cute. <laughs> and then I'm gonna switch from the cross hatching to the soft pencil crayon to do some of these smaller areas. And with this, oh my gosh, it's so so buttery smooth. I love it so much. Um the trick I think is to leave some gaps so that when you add the water portion, it um, it gives you still some of that scribbled in texture and you don't lose that completely. I think the pink I've chosen is way too pink because he looks like, like hot dog meat. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tone it down. Well, you can use the recolor feature for that. <laughs> Yes, I love that. That's the best feature in the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna hop over to a gray and give him some spots. It's funny, our dog is white, but when we shave him, he's got black spots on his skin that grow out white hair. Oh, so that maybe, is interesting. Yeah, he's a little weirdo. I wonder. I wonder if my um. I have a tortoiseshell cat, and or she's got splotchy fur. I wonder if her skin matches that, or if it's all one color. I hope you never have to find out. I know. <laughs> I like the um, water smudge feature in this pack. Um, it's, I don't, did you ever have these kind of um, water pencil crayons when you were little? So I don't know that I did. Um, I, I had quite a few sets of them and it's, it's, they were really fun for drawing something that you didn't really feel like coloring in and then you just smudge over it with the water and the color would, bleed into the middle of the object. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it gives such a cool effect. So when you color in, do you do partially, you render it partially and then add the, the water effect? I usually start with a watercolor brush and then go over it um, on another layer with a pencil crown and then go with a water smudgy bit. Okay, all right, yep. so what I, Maybe we can quick show that too. What I am doing here is on the brush tool using the water for softening 
yeah. brush and I've drawn all of my coloring on one layer and now I can just go in and apply this effect. And this is just like where the magic happens. Um, it's, it's like a really good mix of properly blending and also great control. Yeah. It's actually a nice brush to use with the watercolor pack too, because it's um, a really nice smudging tool. I love that you don't have to switch to the smudge tool also. Yeah. I don't know if you have a quick menu set up, but I actually did for this specific pack. And so when I tap in here, I have a whole quick menu set up that I can just use one finger to swipe down to um, change between brushes. And so being able to smudge just by yeah. pressing this button and, and holding it down and, and um, swiping. It's converted me to quick menu. I never used quick menu before you um, helped me set it up. And it's now one of my favorite things ever. It is pretty phenomenal how it affects your workflow. I'm so happy to hear that you enjoy using it. Okay, and that's, I mean, that's um pretty much it. I might go in and give him some eyes or some color in the eyes. But that's about all I would do. That's so cute. <laughs> just a little nugget. <laughs> Can we see yours? Mine just looks like a weird pink weirdo. <laughs> oh, I love this so much. He's hideous. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, no, I, did, I love I everything did about him. I was showing earlier with the cross hatching on his back, and then I smudged that in, and it actually gives such a great effect. Look at that. That's yeah, really lovely. This looks like fine art. Totally. I'm claiming it. Fine. <laughs> fine. fine. No, it's like, it's so intentional. Um, it really looks like he should probably be on the cover of Vogue. That's <laughs> <laughs> so good. Can you show in just, it, it, well, okay, so it's 7.59. Do you mind if we go over just a few minutes? Yeah. I would love to see the order of operations that you were explaining of the watercolor first and then. Oh, sure. So let me turn off that color layer. I'll do another one. So what I did was I used this brush, Versatile Watercolor, because um, <clears throat> it's, it's really nice for painting and then you get a hard edge. But if you want that edge to soften, you just lift your pencil slightly and give it a bit of a jiggle and it turns to a watery effect. So um, I'll show you here. So um, if you press down hard, it gets darker and then you lift slightly and it softens it a little bit. So if oh, I want yeah. to dark right here on his crotch, then I press hard and light here on his thighs, but light on his shoulder back. Give him some dark inside his ears. It's not a particularly dark color, so it's not showing very much. We'll make it a bit smaller to do his hands. And then I um, went in with a cross hatching here. And I didn't want it to go outside, so I just did. Um, I just did this. Oh, okay. I like that it's just part of it because that's that's faster. Yeah, it is. You don't have to trace the whole guy and get pedantic. Let's make it a bit bigger. And then he's got a bit of a doop doop doops there. And then I did the top of his ears here 
Oops. And then a little bit on his nose. He's got a bit of a situation there. <laughs> and then I went with this nice water smudgy do. And I just gave it a bit of the old one too. Like that. Oh, I did also paint his eyes white with a, um, so he didn't have pink eyes like he'd been <laughs> doing stuff. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, so I think this is a, such a cool demonstration of how, like, I use the order of operations so differently than you and yeah how versatile these brushes are. Um, when I was um, making the um, the box art for the brush pack, I used them in so many different ways. And it, I, I actually, it was really fun. And I thought, I really hope people are going to try all of these different things. And um, yeah, and get the full breadth of what they're capable of. Yeah, I think that it makes them more adaptable to anybody's style, anybody's art style. Yeah. Um, I love the layering or the versatile watercolor for adding shadows and highlights because for shadows, especially when you want to get those um, sharper edges for shadows that are like cast versus yeah. just like the ambient light. Um, and it, it can do both. And so again, it just feels like a time saving thing. So yeah. let me pop in. So that's what I've, oh, I've gone really ahead. Cool. And that's really cool. <clears throat> and added just a bit of shadow. And this was, this is pretty rough, but I added a bit of shadow and then just a slight bit of highlight using an overlay layer. Um, and then multiply for the shadow. And so without and with, just give them a little bit of depth. Cool. Beautiful. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's see. Lori asked, is she doing this all on one layer? And yes, I did. So I did my sketch all on one layer and then I did my coloring all on one layer beneath it. Um, but then as we just saw, Abby did two, three different layers total. Uh, no, I've only got the color layer and the sketch layer exactly the same as you. Oh, okay. So you did the watercolor and then the cross hatching directly on top. Yes, I did. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Um, could have separated them into two layers, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then Mary asks, can you explain again how you did the partial selection? Oh, sure. So when you want to select a, a, just a piece of the drawing, you go here to the little um, ribbon tool. And then instead of having it on automatic, you have it on freehand. And then you can you draw whatever you want your selection to be carefully. And I suggest that when you're drawing selections, lift your pencil a lot in between. So don't draw the entire perimeter and then lift your pencil. Because if you get a if you accidentally do that and you want to undo that, if you undo, you're gonna undo the whole selection and you're gonna be really sad. So rather do draw a little bit, lift your pencil, draw a little bit more, lift your pencil, draw a little bit more, lift your pencil, draw a little bit more, lift your pencil. And then to remove the selection so that you can't paint on top of it, you just close the loop. And then instead of pressing, 
touching your pencil to the dot to close the loop, you press this button at the bottom that can't you can't see because oh, it no, but the there thing we go. you you press the button that says remove. So then that will have the walking lines on it. What do you call these? I call them walking lines. Um whatever. The selection yeah. <laughs> mask. The mask. Yeah, the mask. That's it. <laughs> so now if you paint, let's say, um, let's put a bright color so you can see it. There. So now if you paint here, you can see that it won't paint there where the mask is. And I think because you did that for the cross hatching and then you applied the smudge without yeah. the selection, right? Yeah, you could leave the selection open, but um, I didn't. I like that you did that in that way because um, you don't have to be perfect when you're making the selection. Yeah, yeah. And it makes it feel a little bit organic. I don't know if you um, follow, um, I can't remember her name. She does lots of birds on Instagram, and she often uses a selection tool to um, mask off pieces of the wings and then does like a texture, feather it away from the wing so that it looks. Just, yes, that's Just Spicer Coleman. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is fantastic. Um, I will link that in the chat because her work is just amazing. Yeah, um, it's lovely. <clears throat> oh, and then. Um, Laurie asked, what did we mean by private reference uh, in oh, the time I lapse? I don't know about that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So I can show that. Uh, this is something that I learned recently. It was, it was part of the 5X release. Um, So when you want to add a photo that won't show up in the time lapse, um, you would go into the wrench under actions and then add, and then next to insert a photo, instead of just tapping on that, you're going to swipe to the left and you can insert a private photo. And then you can choose what you want to insert. That is and very sneaky. I love it. I like that it's hard to find. <laughs> and then you'll see in your layers panel, it says private there. And there's no way then to make it unprivate. You just would delete the layer. Um, but that way, then when you go to look at the time lapse replay, it doesn't show up. Oh, so you could be tracing the whole time, put the time lapse on Instagram, look amazing, and nobody would know. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> but it also, I honestly like having it say private underneath if I'm referencing something, just because it yeah. differentiates the layer for me. Yeah. Okay, so, that's really cool. Yeah, that's that. Um, I think that might have been all of the questions let me just double check here yeah i think that's all yeah wonderful cool well thank you for joining us everyone thank you yeah thank you so much. much yeah um definitely let us know if you have any further comments questions and comments afterward, you can leave them in the, in the comment section um, and we will get back to you. And if you have any requests for future live streams, any specific brush packs, I know one we for sure have planned is Abby's oil on canvas brushes. Yes. Uh, but if there's anything else that you want to see, she is prolific and has so many brushes. So there's plenty to try. We could do this for years. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, thank you all for joining us and we will see you next month.